Hey everyone, and welcome to Blessed Other Geek Podcast. We're a podcast that sits down and talks to people about their favorite hobbies, fandoms, and jobs, and lets people know more about those different things that they didn't know, you know, kind of existed or know as much about those different things. So uh, today we're going to be talking with Chris McEwen about the Metroid series. Uh, that's the first person shooter sometimes, and often other times side scroller shooting game from Nintendo uh, since 1985 or something like that. Um, so it's it's definitely one of my favorite uh, as being a big Nintendo fan, and it was Chris's favorite, and that's what he wanted to talk about. So we talk uh, pretty at length about Metroid and the whole series and uh, everything around it. So um, without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. If you have any questions or any topic suggestions for the future, please send us an email at blessedgeekcast at gmail.com, or you can hit us up on Twitter at blessedgeekcast. We also have a Facebook group. Please come on over, join, and um, get the conversation going. So uh, without further ado, let's get going. Alright, so this is our sixth episode of Blessed Other Geek. We're sitting here with Chris McEwen. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, and we have, we've met uh, at Reboot, the local barcade that we have um, in Macon, yeah. Georgia, which is amazing. Yeah, uh, we ended up meeting up, and ironically, how we ended up started talking was that his uh, Mac case had to let, had a Triforce on there, and we just started talking about Zelda and hit it off from there. Yeah, I'm not shy about the things that I am nerdy about. <laughs> and neither am I. <laughs> on my Mac case, there's a there's like a, a fist with the Triforce. It's a Mac, so the, the Triforce on the fist glows. It's covering up the Mac, the Apple logo. Then I have a Cyberman and the Smash Wii U logo. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you for having me on here, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And so... This podcast is about people's fandoms, hobbies, and jobs, and today you decided that you wanted to talk about... Metroid. Which is awesome. Yeah, because uh, Metroid, the remake of Metroid 2 is coming out uh, next week, Friday, I do believe, right? As, as of when we record this podcast. Yeah, yeah as, next... if we re- as if we were report- record. Uh, but yeah... And I already have pre-ordered, like, I have the special, I pre-ordered the special edition twice because I wanted to, like, make sure I got it, and then, and then it came out on Best Buy where I have Gamers Club Unlocked, and so, since I have GCU, I got it, I got the special edition for the regular edition price, and so, now I'm, like, trying to sell off the other, the other (laughs) one that I bought. Um, Uh, Yeah, this is, like, one of the very few games I've literally recorded the special, uh, not recorded, but, uh pre-ordered the special edition for uh i because i have a personal thing about the special editions type stuff because i mean you are spending two hundred dollars for little knickknacks that you could probably get third party in certain cases in certain cases if you paid two hundred dollars for this game then somebody ripped you off (laughs) yeah yeah but i mean like something like final fantasy the tales of games all that jazz if you're sitting there and you're spending two hundred dollars for something that's like a small statue with some art book you're, I don't agree to it. If yeah, you... I, I recently um, I got the pre-order for Fire Emblem Warriors Special Edition, and I wanted to jump on it because when Fire Emblem Fates came out, the Special Edition, you could only get the Special Edition uh, that had all three games mm. on the single cartridge, and then it came with like some sort of like bag for your 3DS, like a carrying pouch or something, and then like two keychains or something. But regardless, yeah. like I wanted all three games on one cartridge. I wanted that, and I missed all the pre-orders. And even still now, it's like 150 200 yeah. and... Uh But yeah, the re- main reason why I got this because I found out the people that are doing the CD are the same people that did Metroid Prime. That did the music behind oh, it. Oh, the soundtrack. Yeah, nice. that's that's why I was like, oh, I want this. Yeah, definitely, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, so let's let's go back to where um, where where did you get started with Metroid? Uh, believe it or not, Metroid Prime. Mm. That was my very first Metroid game, uh, and I remember it because I was twelve years old and. 
at times, yeah, the game kind of did scare the crap out of me. Believe it or not, a Nintendo... Oh, yeah, absolutely. And believe it or not, a Nintendo game scared the ever-living shit out of right. me. Right. <laughs> well, if you ever played Silent Hill... Well, yeah. Because that was on the Wii. Uh, I've played Silent Hill, too, so I played, like, the PlayStation stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm not just a big Nintendo guy. I love Sony games. And this is one, this was one of the ones that I had... A ga- this was one of the best games that I've ever played. And then Metroid Prime 2 came around... I sat there and I played that, and believe it or not, I know how many people sit there and say it's like the best one. I don't believe it is. Nah, it's not the best one. Uh, because I don't like how the ammo counter is for the game. Because, I mean, you develop serious OCD when you get that last beam, the Annihilator, I do believe. Because it uses both light and dark. Oh, that one, yeah, the combo, yeah. Um, it's been so long since I played Prime 2. I played Prime 1 uh, last year for just a little bit. Um, so that's a little bit fresher on my mind, mm. and <clears throat> and I know I remember like one of the games you had the light cannon, you had the dark cannon, and then you had the combo or whatever. Um, was that two or was that three? That's two, because three they went back to uh, the whole stuff of adding on, doing like the two D games, dude. They add on the power stuff right on top of each other, and most people are going, okay, so how are you going to do this? You can sit there and put power beam with the wave beam and the plasma beam. How you're going to use the ice beam in this because we don't know if you're going to go straight with the piercing version of the plasma beam or the heated version like the prime made popular and it was the heated version and you got i think the ice beam right no ice missiles yeah it's been a while since i played that game too um i personally when i started metroid i played the original one on the nes first (laughs) and um i don't know why what what it was about that game because even for the nes there were so many other games that had better visuals at the time because think back to the original Metroid, like the background for every certain aspect of that game is black. Yeah. Like there is nothing to look at other than the platforms you're jumping on. Yeah, because if you, because the other one that comes to mind that everyone loves comparing Metroid to is Castlevania. Yeah. And Castlevania had these gorgeous detailed backgrounds even for the NES. And it's just, and that's the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, you're you are right. It. Did, it was very minimalistic in what they did, but the colors popped. It right. It helped it out. I, and honestly, the soundtrack really kind of brought me in for some reason. The, the whole Brinstar. <laughs> uh, that one really brought me in. And then the fact that, like, I could so easily just get lost. Like, oh. instant. Like, I would, be, I would be playing for, like, 45 minutes and be like, I have no idea where I am. That was number two for me. And that's the reason why I'm excited for the remake. Because I have never finished... Samus returns. I got. I could kill like five Metroids, and I go. Where the fuck do I go from here? Right, right. I played Samus Returns uh, for the on the 3DS uh, about th- two, three years ago. I found. Um, I guess I, there may have been a my Nintendo thing where I got a discount on it or something, and um, so I played it. And when I played that, I played it. I played the entire game in about three days. And so since I played it in such a short time for like a long period each time i actually had a pretty good mental map of like what because you didn't have a map in that game yeah. like that game really suffered from not having a map but if you play it all like in one sitting or close to you can remember like sort yeah. of like where things are whatever. it's uh it was ve- it's very much like the original castlevania in that sense if you want to go that far because that game didn't have a map either. The way you got that map is you got that fucking Nintendo Power magazine and it had it like <laughs> right there for you to use. That was the same way with like the original Metroid too. Yeah. Uh, I played I played Castle the first Castlevania, but I played that back when I was like a sophomore in college, so that was eight years ago that I played that. Goodness. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. So that is not and Castlevania has never kind of it, it hasn't it's never like brought me in as much as metroid ever did yeah. for some reason and i'm not i think it's because like i love sci-fi right and the whole like medieval kind of stuff sometimes it, aspect. sometimes it appeals to me like zelda like obviously like i love zelda more more than most people do i promise gee i can't understand because you got a shield <laughs> hanging up in here there's a shield there there's my special edition up there my son's in school his name is link and all sorts of stuff <laughs> But like when it comes to, I don't know, I don't know, vampires maybe is maybe is what it is because like it, it could be. I mean, because Castlevania, I know we're bouncing from this between Metroid and no, Castlevania, yeah. 
But Castlevania had the horror aesthetic where you were fighting the mummy, you were fighting Frankenstein, the grim fucking reaper, right. and all that jazz. And Metroid, yeah, you're going against these fantastical creatures that were that were just literally popped from someone's mind. Right. So you got the idea of someone's design, and they're not based off Well, of and then, like we were saying before, the visuals on that game looked far better than Metroid did. Yeah. So there was that, too. Um, but to go back to Metroid, um, so sa- the uh, remake of Samus Returns comes out. So Samus Returns, uh, well, why don't, we, why don't we go back and talk about the first Metroid? Okay. Uh, the first one. So, uh, Do you want to talk about Zero Mission or the NES one? Uh, no, the NES. And we'll, we'll make our way to Zero Mission. Uh, in fact, um, let me pull up a Metroid timeline. Because I do know... Because uh, there's one that I wanted to talk about. And I'm, you're, I'm probably, I think you're going to be surprised about my opinion about it. Which one? The original? Uh, no. Other M. Oh. I. You know what? No, let's, let's wait for it. Because... <laughs> Alright, I have my timeline here. Alright. So the original Metroid came out in 1986 for the NES. Um, you had three bosses in the game. You had Kraid, Ridley, and Mother Brain. If you don't count the fake Kraid, yeah, there's yeah. a fake Kraid. Yeah, he's right before. He's usually right before the boss room, I think. No, that's Zero Mission and Super Metroid. Where he's yeah, yeah. Usually there. Um, so Kraid is like, um, imagine Taka from from uh, TMNT2, Secret of the Use. You know the, the big uh, turtle, yeah. <laughs> turtle thing? Like, that is that is Kraid. Um, so he's got, like... About Godzilla size, though. No, no, no. In the game, he's actually a little bit shorter than you are. Uh, um, yeah, which I'm is... thi- yeah, I'm thinking of Zero Mission. I'm thinking of Zero Mission, because he was made Godzilla size to show oh, how yeah, yeah, yeah. he was. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get to Zero Mission in a minute and the changes that we... That... We'll talk about Zero Mission directly after this one. So, okay. uh, in the original one, you had Kraid, and what... What was so interesting about the Kraid fight was that he had three, um, like, chest spike missiles that would come out at you at different levels, and if you fight, if you hit them, like, with your bullets or your missiles or whatever, like, nothing happened. So, yeah. um, what you, really, in that game, the wave beam was nice and everything, because it went through walls and it had double the power, but it was the ice beam that, like, you you couldn't really beat that game very <laughs> well without the ice beam. No, some game. A lot of the Metro games had that stable beam that you couldn't really beat the game without. I mean, even the Prime games had that. But mm-hmm. uh, to go back to the original one, staying on that one, the I guess the hardest part for that was going through a lot of the uh, stuff because with all the bosses and all that, because each one was teaching you how to fight certain enemies. Uh, one of them was teaching you how to fight. Where Kraid was teaching you. That you can't always just go guns in, running guns blazing to try to hit a enemy with the spikes flying at you. Right. Ridley was teaching you... Kraid was about, like, positioning yourself correctly in the vertical space. Yeah. Ridley was the horizontal space because he would always hop around, jump, and... Yeah, he, he, he fired these little um, twirling razor things at you a lot, and that was kind of annoying. Yeah. But, um, if you so if you had the ice beam with Kraid, it was really cool because you could... Because you could freeze the top two um, chest spikes that he shot out, and then he wouldn't shoot any more out. So as long as they were frozen, like you could just like missile all day. Mm. Um, so that was the tactic there to do that one. And then Ridley, Ridley was the same thing with the with the yeah disky things that he threw out. So if you froze those, he wouldn't shoot anymore. So you'd have to freeze them up when they were up high in the air, and then. Just go down and just, like, fire away. Yeah, Mother Brain, <clears throat> shoot the glass, shoot her in the face, and then get the hell out. That was... Yeah, if you... And, Mother, again, Mother Brain, if you froze the uh, little donuts that came yeah. at you, then it wouldn't generate any more, but if you didn't freeze that, those... They kept that one... That's the only thing they kept with the Zero Mission remake, by the way. They Was those, yeah. Yeah, they changed a lot for that Zero Mission remake. So, okay, so at this point, um, yeah, we can go to Zero Mission, because um, I... I played most of it recently, but I haven't finished it. I did. That was the one that I... That was how I actually went through, because they added a second section to it as, a po- as like, a sort of post-game type thing. Oh, okay. But, uh... But it was really, really good. Uh, it follows the same story like the original. Samus goes to... I think it's SR388? Yep. or No, it's Zeb's. He goes... To, she goes to planet... She goes to planet Zebs. That's Zebus. Zebus. That's the first... That's the first mission she ever had. It's called Zero Mission for that reason. And she's trying to figure out what's going on. All the while, while she's going on there, just exploring the planet, trying to figure out what's going on, 
they, they show cutscenes, and one of the cutscenes they show Ridley in a in his spaceship with the pirates, flying towards Zeb's because uh, Zebus. I keep saying Zeb's. That's just <laughs> that's easy for me to say. Zebus and for the longest time I thought it was Zebes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he fl- they fly towards it because he gets a notification from Mother Brain that Crate has died, and he's going and. She's in the game, in the kinetically in the game, I think even Nintendo Power, they even stated they were brothers, in quotation marks, somewhat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I Well, I thought Mother Brain, um, I thought Mother Brain was the whole control center, like, it, it was telepathically controlling all the space pirates and Ridley and Kraid. Um, so, like, because that's, that's why Mother Brain was the threat, right? Yeah. But I, I never really understood their relationship with that. I, all I do know is that Ridley was the leader of the Space Pirates, Craig was the quote-unquote brother, and Mother Brain was just a bad bitch brain. Right. <laughs> but um, because he gets, a, he gets the idea that someone's killed Craig, comes down, and then you get the classic dun-dun-dun-dun-dun, the whole Ridley yeah. song and all that jazz when you fight him in there. Uh. But me- but other M plays. If you played Fusions, it, not other M. Uh, Zero Mission. If you played Fusions, it plays exactly like Fusions, to a certain degree. It's just the only difference is you're not killing the parasites. You're killing everything else. <laughs> right. So I, I have Fusion on my NES Classic, um, but I have not finished it. I've played like maybe ten minutes of it. <laughs> you need to play. it. Yeah. It's... That's. I think that's looking at the 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 list here of Metroid games, I think that's the only one that I have not completed other than Zero Mission. But, I mean, like we said, that that's kind of the original game in, in a nutshell. So yeah. I don't really count that. Um, but So Fusion is the only like original Metroid game I haven't beaten yet. Uh, um, other than Prime 4, but no one knows what that's going to oh, be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so then Return of Samus, we talked about that a little bit. So in So what's... So tell people what the uh, the plot of that game is. The the remember the, I remember the plot of that one being Samus was asked by the Galactic Federation to go onto SR three eighty eight and just destroy the Metroid threat because they found out the pirates were trying to use him as a weapon. I think. I thought that I I thought it was that like she had found evidence of one more, and. That followed would, that evidence. Uh, no, no, because that one she was trying to stop the pirates because they she uh, in Zero Mission you find no no, no. wait because in Zero Mission that's when you Zero Mission the original one that's when you fought your first Metroid. I'll tell you what. Um, okay, the Galactic Federation deems this Metroid species too dangerous to exist, and after their own failed attempts, employs Samus to travel to the Metroid homeworld SR three eighty eight to exterminate the entire species. So that's. That's what's going on there. Okay, so I was maybe the remake will sit there and have the pirates in there somehow. Oh, obviously they're going to. That's, yeah, that's all they have, you know. <laughs> that, yeah. That's that's the biggest thing Metroid suffers from is the lack of interesting villains. I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to deny that. Uh, I mean, the only interesting ones were uh, were again. If you sit there and you play uh, the dark, if you play Metroid Prime, you got Dark Samus, which is literally the only interesting one. Yeah, but they reused her twice. True. I'm not gonna say. I it. swear to God, if it's in Prime Four, I'm just gonna rage. Like, it, there's no reason well, for it. it. Be it probably, creative. It, it probably is, but I think uh, there's some rumors floating around. When we get the Prime series, we'll talk about this one because there's some rumors floating around that I saw that seem very interesting. Mm. But um. All right, so. Return of Samus. In this game, um, as you as you land on the planet, you go down to, through a couple tunnels, um, and then you find basically. So Metroids look like jellyfish, right? Yeah. With teeth at the bottom, but without tentacles. Yeah. Um, and they float and like fly or whatever. Well, that's what we're used to seeing as Metroids. It wasn't until Return of Samus that we saw more of their life cycle. Yeah, we saw them basically be more of the Xenomorph from the Alien series. Yeah, which is what it's... Like, the entire series is based on Alien. Yeah. Even uh, Miyamoto has or, come out and, like, admitted it. Like, Or he said it was inspired because he said that was... I, I think he said in the interview that was the one that scared the crap out of him. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah, I just I just got him watching uh, Aliens, the sequel, uh, like, two days ago. And that's the one where there's not one, there's like a thousand of them. And it's like, it's holy like cow, animal. this sucks. 
Um, yeah, if, uh, speaking of Alien, if you are a fan of the series, there is one game that I know you'd have to get Steam, you have to play on Steam for, but it's really, really good. Which one is, is it Isolation? Yes. Yes, I heard really good things about that one. Ignore what IGN says, there are, there are a bunch of shitheads, they don't know what they're talking about, <laughs> they're fucking stupid. Yeah. It's, they did the same shit that they did when it came to Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, 7 out of 10, too much water. Uh, well, I have my own opinions about RS, but <laughs> regardless. Um, so you come across, the first Metroid you come across is not the typical Metroid you, you think of. It's actually in its, uh, the, the... Alpha stage. Alpha or is it Gamma? Uh, I think it's Gamma. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's the Gamma stage. So it's actually a little bit bigger and flies around. And, and it has the armor on top and you only can hit it from the bottom. Yeah. And so as you go, once you kill that... Then you find out that there are a certain number of Metroids on the planet, which is much lower than it should be. It's like 30-something. Um, so you have to go well, and given kill... The si- given the size, though, of the game. Yeah, the sure. Cartridge. Um, but thinking thinking of like the lore of the game, and yeah. it's like, there's only 30 on this planet? Like, is <laughs> yeah. that a big deal? You'd, you'd expect it to be probably be more. Or, like, thousands, yeah. Um, so anyway, you have to go and... and kill all 30 metroids and at the very end you find the queen metroid yeah um and we won't spoil what happens at the end of the game for anybody who hasn't played at that point well i've like i said i like i told you before we started uh i've you haven't gotten that far i hadn't gotten that far i kept getting so fucking lost every time i would kill that first one i go like where the hell do i go now yeah and i and i and i'm one of those type of gamers that refuses to look up a guide Mm. unless i really hate the game or i need to get it done and there's been a couple that happened for me for that. Uh, there's uh, uh, one of the ones that I really hated the game for, which was, believe it or not, the original Enter the Matrix on the GameCube. Oh, I never played those. Play Path of Neo and you're good. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so in the, in the sequel, or in the in the remake, so, there, so okay, so we're, we're kind of touching fan games a little bit here. Yeah. So last year, a fan game came out called another Metroid remake 2 too. remake. So AM2R is, yeah. what, is what it's called, another Metroid 2 remake. Um, and fans kind of went crazy over it because the visuals looked great. It was based off of the visuals from Zero Mission, so it looked yep. really good. There was a map. Um, there was a map, that, but... Because Metroid 2 wasn't on the NES, it was on the Game Boy. Yeah. Not uh, the color, it was on the Game the, Boy. Yeah, it was on the original Game Boy. You could play it on the color, and I've played it on the color, and that's where I was like, I don't know where the hell do I go. Yeah, there's not much. It doesn't add. Not, some games added a little bit of color. Like I know Kirby added yeah, some Kirby, color. Yeah, uh, Kirby, if you play, uh, it had a little Easter egg because I was like the last game, I think, made for the Game Boy at that time, and they added a little Easter egg to it. When Link's Awakening was also one of those type ones, too. Uh, Link's um, Awakening DX and all that. Well, the, there was the original Link's Awakening that came out and then dx actually was still the original game boy cartridge but it had color yeah options in it because you could play it on the original or you could play it but you can only access one specific dungeon if you played it on the color yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, because there yeah because there was the red and blue dungeon yeah um so anyway um so am2r came out and fans loved it but as nintendo does they said cease and desist uh and so they had to take it down and they, I played a little bit. Did you play it? Yeah, I played a little bit of it. Uh, the problem that I have with it is that you can easily tell this was for speedrunners. Like, straight Yeah. Up. And I don't mind when fans do that, because I don't mind that. But when you're sitting here trying to just... You're like, okay, I want to explore. It's almost like that was that was the intent of the remake, was to be a speedrun game. Yeah, I mean, and, and uh, don't get me wrong. I understand that, because, I mean... There's one out there for, again, Zelda, and I know we're going to be touching on this on a Metroid podcast. Right, right. But uh, there's the the Link randomizers where I watched Pro Jared play through the original one and Links to the Past versions of them for the Link randomizing. And that was specifically for speedrunning. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it's been made to the point where you can sit there and play it yourself if you download the ROM. And that's the only way you can play it, sadly. Right. So the, the fan game came out. Nintendo put down on a C and D, and everybody said, "Come on, come on, Nintendo! Like you're not even touching this franchise. Like the last game that had come out that was a original game was Other M, 
Um, and that one came out in 2010. So it's it's been quite a while since we had new content. Since then, we've had Federation Force, which is not worth talking about. That was last year. Um, that was. There's only one reason why I would buy it, and one reason only because I found out that was Iwata's last game that he worked on. Oh, was it? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, I found that out, and I said to myself, I said, if I could find a brand new in package, I will never open the game. I will just buy it and keep it there. Yeah, and the other problem with that game is that it relied, it was like Triforce Heroes. It relied on, on having multiplayer, people yeah. be it, there. And I mean, if I've, the game sucks, people aren't going to play for very long, you know, regardless. No, I, I, and I understand that, because uh, I know we're jumping from a... We're jumping from a... <laughs> right. Yeah, we're jumping, we're jumping around. Yeah, we're jumping from AM2R to this, but going back to AM2R... I, the one thing that I found out was that they were sent a C and D, but they literally told Nintendo, they said, we're not selling this for profit, but we will take down the download links. But they, I think the guy made an agreement with them because he put it on his blog spot that he said that I made an agreement with them that I'll keep this link up for 24 hours, but afterwards it's done. I'm right. not going to post it back up, whatever you guys do from there. Well, so people got really upset that, because, you know, yeah. this is a great remake, and it's finally and it's getting taken down. Why, and, you know, a lot of people ask, like, why don't these people make the game and then come to Nintendo and say, hey, I made this, you should sell it, you know? And then I mean, cue in the, the internet meme where it's like, hey, I made this, and it's like, hey, I made this, you yeah. know? Like, <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I mean, Nintendo's taken in a lot of people that have made fan games, because I, I know they offered a job up to that guy that made Pokemon Uranium. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, well, and probably the Pokemon company offered him a job. Probably than... The Pokemon company probably did because they were like, holy shit, this is good. Right. But, uh... Was that the one that came out about the same time? About the same time, I and... I played that for, like, Yeah, and, but, this and... Was, but this was, like, this was the one that they uh, kind of had the mutual agreement of, yeah, we will take this down, but uh, we'll sit there and let people get the last download link, all that jazz, whatever. Well, a year after this all C and D stuff was this past E three, where Nintendo announced they had been working on um, their yeah. own Metroid Two remake. Yeah. <laughs> so and, that and that's the one we talk we were talking about comes out next uh, next week. Next it's week Friday on the three DS. On the three DS, um, I'm excited as all get out. And it does in, in, introduce a new mechanic where Metroid can actually like hit. Samus something can, like yeah, that block was actually, something back with their with her cannon arm. That actually was in other M. They but this shows you how much they know fans do not like other M because other M had the counter attack. Oh in wow, there. I yeah. don't even recall that. See, it has the counter attack in there, and it has the uh, it has some of the melee stuff. It has the grapple mechanic. <laughs> uh, now we're gonna if you want to jump ahead to other M because you're gonna be surprised about my. Not yet, that. not yet. Uh, all right, so after Return of Samus was Super Metroid on the SNES, and that was 1994. And this is, I was going to say until Metroid Prime, but there's only one game between those. Um, Which is Fusions, one of my favorite ones. Right, but I mean, Super Metroid to this day, you could pick up and be like, holy crap, this is a fantastic game. I have game. it on my 3DS. I even have it on the Wii U. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like one of the very Yeah, few I think people. I have it in both places as well. I'm one of the very few people <laughs> that still has a Wii U that hasn't got a Switch yet. <laughs> no. But, um, yeah, it's... And that's actually the one that I've been currently playing through slowly. Right. Because I do enjoy it. I really, really do enjoy it. It's just that it's one of those type of games that if... They somehow, quote unquote, remake it, and they just put that version out with added mechanics in there. Right. I wouldn't tell the difference. Well, and this is this this kind of goes into the thing that Nintendo does a lot that bothers me, which is that like Super Metroid is just a retelling of Metroid One again, and Zero Mission is a retelling of Metroid One again. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> like, saying that the, it's not. And, but... and, and Samus Returns is a retelling of. Return of Samus again, like. Well, <laughs> well, let's face it this way: when it comes to when it came to Zero Mission, they the whole point of a remake, uh, I say, is this: if you can make it better, do it. That's the whole point of a remake to me. And Zero Mission, because you said you hadn't really finished it out, right? Because there's right. A, there's a post game where after you beat Mother M, uh, not Mother M, yeah, Mother M, Mother Brain, 
you have a stealth section that you have to use as Samus in her Zero Suit because the pirates shot her down while she was in mid-removal of her power suit. Mm. So she gets shot down and loses her power suit. So you're basically doing a stealth mission and you take like times five damage from these fuckers. Nice. So you basically are going, okay, how do I do this? And this is like a very intense moment of the game. So if you're playing it late at night, you're sitting there getting scared. Right. While... Other M, uh, well, not other M, uh, uh, the Samus 2 remake, they might have a post game in there that no one, that even people of the original went, the hell's this? Yeah, it's true. Um, but yeah, Super, Super Metroid, like it, like I said, it's a retelling of the first Metroid, but it does add a lot of cool stuff yeah. to it. Um, I mean, and if you really want to go by the official timeline, uh, the Prime series come after Return of Samus. Because she's still hunting down the pirates because she finds out that there's other Metroids, but she wants to stop them from using them as weapons. Yeah. Because uh, you have uh, Prime 1 where you find the Talon Metroids. Prime 2, they're still using the Talon Metroids on Aether. And you find out a couple of things about them. So she's she's if you want to go by the official timeline, it goes like uh, NES 1, the NES Metroid 1, Metroid 2, the Prime series, then Super Metroid... Other M and then Fusion, which that's it's it's a confusing timeline. It's more confusing than Devil May Cry's timeline, but it's a good timeline in general. Um, so after Super Metroid is Fusion, the one that you keep talking about. Yeah. And so what's the premise in this game? Uh, the premise of this is immediately after uh, is immediately after Other M. As much as fans will not agree that it's after Other M, it's immediately after Other M. And basically, what happens with Other M? Is that once you kill the Metroid, once you kill the Metroid, and we all see the, uh, we see, with other end, it goes from after Super Metroid, you see her kill Mother Brain, and there's a whole bunch of plot that you do in other M, but there's creatures from other M that you find and kill that the Galactic Federation takes onto a space station to study. You find, and Samus is tasked to guide personnel to SR 3D8. They find out there's a parasite that the metroids have been keeping at bay called x these parasites have you ever seen the thing no it's on my list of movies uh it's the parasites are basically like the thing where they can assimilate you activate act as perfectly as they can be with you but when threat arise they mutate and they start attacking uh that's basically what the metroids were eating they right. were keeping these things at and, bay, and you have, and and the game operates a little bit like Return of Samus in that there's so many that you have to hunt down and kill. No, no, not at all. Uh, you're trying to stop the spread of them on the space station, but like, uh, and it's one of the reasons why with the Thing comics and the Thing movie is that you don't want this thing, to, you don't want this creature to leave Antarctica because if it gets out of Antarctica, it can just sit there and assimilate the world within fifty days. Right. And this is where you can see where there's a lot of inspiration pulled from Alien. Yeah. Because in the sequel, Ripley goes with a team of people as as basically a... Um, a marine, as a, as a confidant about the xenomorphs or the bugs, as everyone calls them, and tries to help them out and shit hits the fan. Right. Like, she's just there as an informant, kind of like, yeah. letting people know, like, this is what we're looking for and this, this is what This is what you need to of. stop. This is what you need to blow up, stay away from them, etc. Because but if the xenomorphs got out, then the entire universe would be a, a danger, too. It'd be a danger, too, but you also have Waylon Yutani, who wants to make them a weapon. Right. But, and you all, but this is also the same way with, uh, with uh, the Galactic Federation. They find out that the Metroids were pretty decent, and one of the biggest plot points you find out is that uh, there's a clone of Samus walking around called SAX. It's uh, basically it's basically a clone of her that was an X parasite because she got infected with it. They used a Metroid vaccine to save her, so that's the reason why she has the cool ass fusion suit, why everyone loves it. And they go, "We want this fusion suit to come back," and why everybody flips shit about the Mebo incident. We'll get into that. In a little yeah. Bit. But you find out the Galactic Federation has been taking the sample of DNA of the Metroid that was from Samus's suit because the Metroid saved her because of Super because of uh, Super Metroid. You find out they were cloning him. You find out they were making Gamma, Zeta, Alpha, and the new one, Omega versions, which is 
within the span of days and you find and there's one cutscene that i remember completely is that one of the clones of samus and sax is sitting there destroying everything because it's going oh shit my prey the, my predators are here. Right, right. It's so, it's going into that mutated stage of like trying to attack stuff. No, it's just no because it since it's a clone of Samus, it has the gun in everything, so it's right, just right. firing off ice beams everywhere. But it's but it's but it is the parasite that takes on the form of Samus. Yeah, right? yeah it yeah. is the parasite. Yeah. But since it doesn't have to mutate because it has Samus's abilities full one hundred percent, it can sit there and just fire away. Right. So Metroid Fusion came out in two thousand two. And the previous Metroid was Super Metroid, which came out in 1994. Mm-hmm. So there's a almost a 10-year gap between Metroid games. But that same year of Metroid Fusion, we got the first 3D world-exploring Metroid Prime game. Yep. Which is, it was a giant game-changer because everything up until this point were all 2D side-scrolling platformer yeah. Met- Metroidvania games. Yeah. Uh, in... As I stated beforehand, that was my very first one that I've played, and I went back and played the other ones. Right. And so, in the in the first couple Metroid games, there's no dialogue, like, at all. There's no dialogue. Mm. You have to ascertain the plot By... from computers and different things here and there. But, again, especially the first, like, two Metroids, there's almost no, Yeah, like, this one was... This story. One, Metroid Prime was the first one that did uh, all the stuff that... Yes. And there's still nobody there for you to talk to. Mm-mm. Instead, you use your visor to scan like literally everything in the literally environment. Literally lore, and this is a uh, uh, some call me Johnny ended up saying this is a scan haven type of thing. Yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, and it's he has to sit there and he has to do that. Like there are three, five, seven hundred things you can scan in the game or something like that. It's insane. It, they said it's over a thousand. Oh well, then there you go. Yeah, they said it was over a thousand, and it. I remember because I remember this game because uh, there was one aspect because I remember this game really well because this was the first one that allowed you to change the beams on your gun. It didn't stack like the previous ones, mm-hmm. and so can you imagine me going back to play the original Metroid games, going, "Oh hey, well, well in Super Metroid, I think you could have changed your beams on the select. You could turn them on and off. Yeah, but yeah. You couldn't, you couldn't royally like on the fly right. select what you needed. Yeah, right. Okay." So imagine me going back playing the original ones going, okay, where's my wave beam? Where's my plasma beam? Right, right. Where's my ice beam? What the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah. Keep in mind, I was a kid. I didn't know. Right. Now I do. So in in Metroid Prime, you, we find out that the space pirates are doing experiments on Metroids and, and phase breeding on them. And, yeah. With phase well, phase on. on was Metroid 2. Echoes. No. It was Phazon's an overarching thing, but they were using it. They found this thing on uh, on Met, on the first Prime Talon Four because it had this nice. It was a nice substance they can use, but it had mutative effects. And this was the game that you found out that these space pirates were fucked up individuals, right? Because one of their dialogues that I remember finding in one of their logs was was we are trying to replicate the hunter's abilities. To the extent that we can try, there's a couple that we can't use. The morph ball we cannot use because subject has, let's say, compacted on himself. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't take much to right. figure out what they did. Right, right. Um, so Metro Metro problems are really really good. It's giant overworld that you can explore, and the soundtrack on that game is really, really sneaky. Oh, the oh Norfair, that soundtrack. Oh. The Norfair and the Talon 4 soundtracks are both, like, solid, I'm solid sorry. things. I, I, I'm sorry, that was the first time that I heard the Rid- the Ridley music, mm. and everyone, and that's been his classic theme, and they've done remixes of it. Bump, 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 Yeah, bump, that. Bump. Yeah. <laughs> And I, that's one of the that's one of the Nintendo songs that I'm like, oh yeah, let's get <laughs> you, it going. Because you, you sit there and you can feel the tension between these two. And as much as, because as I said, I got stuff to say about other M, which is almost there. Yeah, we're almost there. Uh, Metroid Prime Two Echoes now. Sure. This is the sequel to Prime One, and you find out that. Samus was going. The whole point of this was that she goes to Aether, which is due to the phase on has been split in two via dimensions. Sci-fi, go figure how they did that. There, um, 
Samus is sent to investigate the planet Aether after a squad of GF Marines was lost there. She finds all of them dead, killed by several creatures, mostly by an evil race called the Ing. Yep. Uh, and they possess life forms, transforming themselves or transforming them into monstrous dark versions of their former selves to wage war with Aether's dominant race, the Luminoth, which are like the light ver- which are <laughs> they're basically moths, like they're giant walking around moths. It's kind of it's crazy. It's a pu- it's a pun from Japan. What what do you expect? <laughs> upon upon meeting the only r- remaining member of Luminoth, the others are frozen in stasis chambers awaiting the destruction of the Ing. Samus learns Aether has been split into two dimensions by a meteor similar to one that crashed on Talon 4. Samus agrees to assist by covering Aether's planetary en- energy, the light of Aether, from Dark Aether. She does this by going to Dark Aether and absorbing the energy into her suit, then placing the energy back into the energy controllers of Light Aether. It's so freaking confusing. By completing this task, she destroys Dark Aether and the Ing that inhabit it. Um, and then it talks about the final boss, but we won't, we won't get in there, because that's, yeah, again, that's, that's spoiler territory. Yeah, that's spoiler territory. Because this was the this was the one that it actually had. This one introduced Dark Samus. This I remember because that was at the beginning of the game, and it was like it split off from her, and she's like, "What is this?" And then Dark Samus runs off, and then that uh, starts a whole. No, not split off from her because you find out at the end of Metroid Prime One if you 100% the game when she loses the phase on suit. Uh-huh. And this is a 2004 game, so if I spoil the final yeah, boss, yeah, yeah, at I this don't point, care. right? I don't care because you fight basically Metroid Prime, haha, title of the monster game, right? Uh, and you fight it in its gelatinous, like, uh, think the alien from Independence Day form. Mm-hmm. And it basically possesses her and it tries to do a kamikaze one final kill type move, rips the Phazon suit off of her, and she's sitting there escaping in the gravity suit. And your logical mind would go, Samus, girl, you got so much radiation poisoning it's not funny right but if you 100 percent of the game i.e you found all the items you scanned everything you got a cutscene of of a black suit punching through oh, the I phase see. on and you saw the eye move around oh, meaning I gotcha. metroid prime has become samus his way sure um so then you had so after echoes we had pinball and hunters and Pinball, I mean, it's, it's a pinball game. I mean, there's there's really not too much there. Uh, Hunters was one that a lot of people got really excited about, and it was a multiplayer game where you played other bounty hunters. And, and this had, is like the first time it really expanded on yeah, the universe a little bit. Yeah, and it had, and it had, it was a decent idea too. I mean, how to play it was a pain in the ass. Sure, right? Because this this was on the DS. Yeah. And in order to do it. Uh, you you had to use. Was there online play at that point, or did you have to like meet up with other people who? They had on, they had uh, they had a mediocre online play, but it got better if you met up with people to play. And there was one where because I remember I had to play the game style because you sat there. I played it on the 3ds, so it was a lot easier. Right. But um, you had because the the a the a and the arrow keys literally helped you move, but you had to use the stylus to move around, tap the fire, and it would... Right, and that falls under ter- the, the Nintendo territory of like, hey, we have a touchscreen! Use it for everything! See, that or we're see gonna... Phantom Hourglass in Spirit Tracks. <laughs> that, or it was literally, hey, we got this new idea, let me cram it down your yeah, throat exactly. until you love it. Yeah, exactly. 100%. And then everybody's like, I don't love it! I don't love it! Mm-mm. Yeah. I was just one of them that was like... And they're like, no. okay, fine. You like motion controls, right? <laughs> we have the system called the Wii. Now, the new Motion Plus for Metroid, I can't go back and play the original three, the original two Metroid Prime games on the GameCube anymore. Yeah, because I, when I played Metroid Prime last year, I started playing it. I was like, this is... Aw- like, I can't control this. This is awful. And so now I'm thinking back- about buying uh, the Metroid Prime Trilogy, maybe for the Wii U, so I can go back and play yeah, it properly. It's, yeah, it's 20 bucks. It's... It's twenty bucks. You use Metroid. You use the motion controls if you played like uh, you're a big Pikmin fan. So yeah, you know about the new motion control plus for the Pikmin games right. and how well it smoothly runs. Oh, it improves it. A yeah, thousand percent. The with the new motion control ones for uh, Metroid Prime trilogy, it's a little bit of a learning curve. I will not lie, because if you hadn't played it in a long time, you sit there and you have to try to refine that position that you would know how to use and get ready to fire. So it's there is that, but it's it's very fun. I that's the only way I could recommend ever playing this game ever again. Right, is play it with the 
control motion controls like that. Okay, so then then we have Metroid Prime Three Corruption, which was originally on the Wii. It was the first one on the Wii, and it was the first one to only use one motion. The, well, one of the only ones on the Wii. Right, but I was I was talking about the trilogy and other M. Yeah, um, right. But you had this is the first time it was first person shooter on the Wii. It was a first person Metroid shooter game, which is amazing. Uh, and it was and the you had only the, one with dialogue too. Like, full-on voice... It was one of the first ones with full-on voice acting. Oh, I see. I got you. Um, and Sam... I, I think that one gets a pass because Samus didn't talk. But... Again, back in true Nintendo form, we yeah. don't want our main characters to talk. <laughs> Other M has something to talk to you about. Right. Well, I mean... We realize where that would be a bad mistake when we talk about Other M in just a minute. Uh, yeah. Um, so <laughs> that one's going to probably take up the bulk of talking. So Metroid Prime 3 kind of, it hopefully, is what I have to say, it hopefully ended the whole phase on and Dark Samus thing. Because I really, because it used it too, they used it too much and it should be over. It should, it should be over. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't mind Dark Samus being the villain. If she's back for Metroid Prime 4... It's so lazy, though. It's lazy, It's but so lazy, because you don't have to do any new character development. You don't have to do any new character design. True. It's, but in, it's so lazy. Come on. Make I'm, something new and fun. I'm not going to disagree with you on that, but there's a rumor floating around that I saw on Reddit, and I can't seem to find it anymore because I was looking for it earlier. Right. Uh, that there's a rumor floating around for it saying that Dark Samus possibly will return, but... Move Kitty. Kitty. <laughs> Kitty jumped on the table with the microphones. Uh, but you have to work with Dark Samus against something even greater than her because it's threatening her existence. Okay, I really hope that doesn't happen because that sounds awful. It sounds awful, but it's interesting to a point because, I mean, I'm still waiting on the Zelda game where you get the bounce to Zelda real quick again, where you get the uh, build up of say Ganondorf Link and Zelda having that true friendship and having that one climactic battle of, do you kill your best friend? Because that's what a lot of people have the fan theories on, especially for, uh, for when it was one of the fan theories for breath of the wild was that Ganon was Link's friend, but he found out about the curse and he went mad. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, so it it's an interesting idea. I, I think I think the whole partnership to fight off something greater would work better in Zelda. Yeah, because it, you'd have to like Link and Zelda would have to convince Ganondorf or Ganon to join them and be be the Triforce together. Yeah, to defeat something else and you know put their differences aside. I think I feel Nintendo, like Nintendo would use this. We want conversation. That's right. That's right. That ain't gonna happen. But that'd be nice. Yeah, it would. Um, all right, so let's talk about Metroid Other M. I know, uh, I know you're so giddy and you want to get to this point. So Metroid Other M, this game came out in 2010. Uh, this was the second original Metroid game on the, the Wii. Wii. The, the year before, 2009, we had Metroid Prime Trilogy, which packed one Prime 1, 2, and 3 yeah. on the Wii, and you have Wii controls for the GameCube Yeah, games. and it had a bonus stuff that you can get that you couldn't get. So the first thing I would say about Metroid Other M is when it came out, and it the trailer came out you didn't use the wii remote and the nunchuck you Mm -mm. only used the wii remote and everybody's like well how am i gonna move around yeah uh it goes back to like somewhat goes back to the classic version of metroid where it's like a 2d it's like a 2.5d type thing where you're moving around using the uh the d-pad yeah on the the nunchuck uh not the nunchuck the The uh, remote but and it was, and it's fun. It, the gameplay is solid. It's very fun. I mean, and but I can already hear people already screaming if whenever this goes up in the comment section of "You son of a bitch, you love that game? I can't <laughs> believe it! You fucking moron! Did you see what they did to Samus?" <laughs> and there's a reason for it. I, I, I will, there's a reason for it. And Gaijin Gooba actually goes into detail with this because Samus has PTSD. Right. And when I don't I don't care how badass you are, when you sit there and you see the guy that you've killed for the final time, it's not coming back. You've been just fighting mechanized versions of him. We're talking about Ridley. Yeah. And you find and you see him come back in this feral state, I don't care who you are, you're gonna shit yourself in fear because you it's, thought he was gone. It's true, but so for anybody who doesn't know what's going on, the problem the problem people have with Metroid 
other M were a few different problems, and uh, one is first the controls. The controls because because Nintendo nailed it with the Wiimote nunchuck combo in Metroid Prime Three. They nailed it. It was done. It was amazing. Yeah, it, but it wasn't the same studio that did Metroid Prime. It was a different studio, I do believe. Right. Um, I'm gonna see who that who that was real quick. Uh, I pull up. That's Team Ninja who did that one. Yeah, uh, we, that one's more for Team Ninja was more for. Uh, Whereas Retro did Prime. Yeah, series. Retroid Studios did Prime, and I don't know if they're doing Prime 4, so... Nobody knows who's doing it yet. Okay. Um, but yeah, so the controls were the first problem. The second problem is the voice acting itself wasn't great. And there was a reason for that, too, to be honest with you. Well, that's direction. Um, and uh, then the third problem would be the script itself. Yeah. And how... Because uh, uh, as much as I hate sounding like a weeb... If you play the Japanese version and you have the English subtitles hacked in, Samus sounds perfectly fine because that's how Japanese char- that's how Japanese portray characters that are cold. They have to be cold and harsh, but they have this bit of personality of "fuck you, I'm not going to listen to you." But okay, you do have a point type of attitude, right? And they tried to directly translate that for the script. Now, did it work? Hell no! I, th- I think maybe they should have chose a different actress for it. But, so the other problem but the was act- that... But that was the actress's first job, though. That's oh, well, why... So there's her problem. Yeah, it was her first job, but I'm... But it's kind of like, like the voice actor for Breath of the Wild for Zelda. Like, I wasn't in love with it. Some I people mean, are, and... It, it worked for what... It, she worked it for what she needed. I mean, I like the fact that Zelda has a bit of a British accent because it makes sense. That doesn't bother me. I just didn't like her voice. Well, yeah, I didn't Rivali, like... Rivali was awesome. Well, Rivali was a dick. He was, but his voice actor was great. Um, uh, Urugosa was great. Mifa, when you could hear her, that's no, the only. I, that's I, the. I wasn't. I wasn't impressed with that either. That I said anyway. when you could hear her, she was good. So the script for Mother M, uh, Mother M, I said Mother, the, yeah, the, yeah, it's a pun. <laughs> Mother, Metroid Mother, yeah. Right. So the the script for Other M was was kind of awful too. It, it really just kind of like made Samus a big pushover pussy um i mean because she's supposed to be this hard ass bounty hunter right yeah like she is supposed to be her own solo thing and she comes in on this planet and finds out that her old um squadron is there her old squadron and her old um Um, army academy yeah and this is why i said this adam this why this game i said this game leads into fusions because you got some bosses that are from fusions into other m and other m is immediately after fusions because is immediately before fusions right because you have a creature in there called nightmare which can control gravity you fight ridley again of course because it's metroid and, and again like come on nintendo like make something new it's and not they did. hard and come they on did. they uh they added some they added some bosses in there that were different but right this is but so, they expanded on ridley because you find out that he starts out as this a little adorable looking Furby looking motherfucker oh, that yeah, eats yeah. insects and then goes into It's like the, Gremlin mixed with Furby a little bit. Furby a little bit, then goes into this adolescent like reptile reptile looking thing. Right. And with feathers all over, and then you see him go into and then you see him go into that. That's the So you're seeing the Ridley larval Ridley, stages. Uh, yeah, you and see stuff Ridley's like that. evolution, and that's the big thing I give credit to the game, is that you give what this thing needed was a sort of an evolution because you go like, okay, we know there are space dragons out there, but right, how does it start? How off does it start? Well, so back back Keeping, to the script and, and what yeah. they did to Samus, which is like I was saying before, like she's supposed to be this hard ass bounty hunter who she runs by her own code and she lives by her own rules and stuff. But then they come in and she is immediately like weakened by a man you know figure who comes in and says that like well if you're going to join our team then you need to like let go of all of your power upgrades and i'll let you know when you can use them like Which, that's kind of a dick move like you're not dick, my superior right kind now. of a dick move but she was also hired by the galactic federation and we don't know their contract because they could sit there and say hey we don't want you to use no it. no 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 she wasn't? Samus receives a distress signal and follows it to a mysterious vessel named the, ba- the Bottle Ship. Oh, okay. There she encounters a squad of Galactic Federation soldiers. So, like I said, she just happens to be there when they're there. Right. And then, her, and then Adam, the Commander Adam, comes in and was like, you're going to join us, but you're going to give up all your weapon. It's just, it was, 
So this is the thing with the with the Metroid series is that they, you they start off powerful, but you lose everything like somehow. immediately, like every time. But and it, this was Nintendo's way of doing it, and it, or technically it was Team Ninja's way of doing it. I mean, it. and like, and but like I said, the gameplay is really good. The dialogue, yes, there are problems with the dialogue. I will not deny that. That is something. The baby, I, the baby, the baby, the baby. Like the, always talking about the Metroid baby that came in. That is in something and, I will not deny. The voice actress, <laughs> the voice actress. I always go with the rule of first. If your first time doing a job you get a one freebie that's it pick up the game it shouldn't have been time. used on that game though you i'm know? not i'm not denying that it shouldn't have right but well, but this but this is also again with the direct translation script because if you because like i said if you listen to the met if you listen to samus in japanese she sounds as much as people would like to hear her sound when you read the subtitles right because there's because uh hard-ass females are supposed to sound cold direct informal very very quote unquote rude right because this is all from Guy Jagumba and I didn't think of this that way but when you try to which is a good YouTube channel if if never, nobody's heard of Guy Jagumba yeah, uh, if, you like, if you like uh, culture and gaming he's the best guy to watch and he does a lot of Nintendo stuff true uh, but if when you sit there and you directly translate it it doesn't have that weight because how do Americans view a cold person they're drawn back they sound very they're, very monotone they're very quiet that too yeah yeah well, yeah. So, other M, um, there's a lot of controversy around it. There's a lot of people who hate it, but there there is definitely a small band of people who love the game for what it is. I and mean, and if and somebody's I, interested in Metroid, I would personally, I would say, don't make that your first game. Don't. Uh, no, I wouldn't say make it your first game. I'd say start out with Prime, and then I would say start out with Prime Trilogy. Start out with Prime Trilogy, and then make your way around. I'd say Super Metroid after that. Uh, maybe honestly, Zero Mission. I would say zero mission. Two. I would say start with zero mission. Then start the first two. I would say start with the zero mission and prime one. Start with those two because zero on mission, the on the trilogy disc on the trilogy not the, disc not the GameCube only because of the controls and yeah. Uh, we're, I, we're gonna get a lot of shit for the from people. In the well, comments what that? It's called opinions. Everybody has their own. Um, <laughs> it's like an asshole. That's right. So moving on from this, uh, we're gonna move into um, fan material. Yeah. So we have. There are two different um, fan f- fan short films that I've seen. Um, I haven't seen those. You haven't seen them? No, oh, I God. haven't. Okay, so I just saw one of I just saw one of them the other day, which was pretty new, and I didn't like it as much, um, only because they really tried, but it, it fell within that area of like, if it, it, it's okay, it, but it was even... a budget problem, is what yeah. it was. So like, it fell into that weird trough of like maybe you should do it better or you should not do it as good like you need to pick one like yeah. this weird trough of things right there um and it was okay it was only like five seven minutes but the other one the other big one i'm gonna look up the name of it for people who uh who don't know what we're talking about it's it's the big one the sky calls that's what it's called um and this is the other one i was talking about oh a live action short film this one oh that's actually a year old they're both a year old never mind then um <laughs> And there's there's a couple on here, but the sky calls is the big one. And this one, since my computer's not going to play audio, uh, I can pull this up and kind of show you. This one is 11 minutes long, um, and it's the budget on this one is actually really really holy good. shit. Yeah, it's it's really good. And and the girl who does Samus voice acts a little bit, and uh, she rolls into a little like, morph ball. Like it it looks really good. And it's with this fan film that you really see where Nintendo could come back into the film industry and knock the fucking pants off of pretty much any other studio if they do it right. If they get the fans to do it. Look at that. Look at that. It's amazing. It, we're talking about... We're looking at the scene where she's in the dark and all you see are the uh, trim of her suit glowing in the dark. And it's... Holy it's, fuck, This is a fan man. film. Like, this is a fan film and it looks amazing. So... I, as, to, I gotta watch that later now. As we all know, there's the Super Mario Brothers film. This is, <laughs> and the Super Mario porno that Nintendo owns. Yeah, well, uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> the problem with the Super Mario Brothers film is that Nintendo just handed the rights off. And they yeah. said, do what you want. Here are the rights. You can make a movie. And even Bob Hoskins, who played Mario, came back later and said in an interview that... If he had known what he was doing, he would not have agreed with it, and he wouldn't have gone through with it. Yeah, because so, he, he said he was a fan of uh, Mario at that point in time, I think. Because well, I know Anthony Hop- I know Anthony Hopkins came on that set drunk as fuck. Yeah, every time, yeah. 
Um, and personally, since I'm a huge fan of Nintendo, I like the movie for what it is. Um, <laughs> I don't count it as canon or like I don't. When I watch it, I try not to consider the fact that Even it is Nintendo a Super Mario. Doesn't count it as canon, but right. But um, interesting thing about the fans about the fan film because you brought this up. The studio that did the Castlevania anime. Oh, uh, the new one recently. Yeah, the new one, the four episode long one that everyone gets. That damn holy shit. Yeah, we're, we're still playing bits of this uh, fan film. Uh, it's they really want to sit good. there. They want to sit there and make an anime of Metroid. Can you imagine? No, no, no. Okay, so here's here's one because I've been I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Um, Metroid needs a movie. It doesn't need a series. It needs they, a movie. Well, they'll probably make it into a movie because they want to do that same style with it. Star Fox needs an animated series. Just Zelda like... Zelda needs an animated series, actually. Mm, hang on, hang on. Let me finish. <laughs> so, before um, Star Fox Zero came out, which, again, people have mixed reviews on that. I loved it. There I, was a, there was I an animated... Because, I love it because they did that. If Once you 100% the game, they sit there and say to our co-wing and pilot... We will be miss you, uh, which was a tribute to. Oh yeah, 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 and it brought Chills. tears to my eyes. Chills and tears. Oh yeah. goodness. Um, but right before that game came out, they they had a short anime short film that was yeah. twelve minutes long. Yeah, and it and you again, you see where like there is so much potential for Nintendo to knock people's socks off. Going to Zelda, you need an HBO Zelda series. Look at Game of Thrones, but make it the Master Sword, and holy and shit. You have something awesome. <laughs> and Nintendo will never do that because they don't want to like, no, we don't want Zelda to become a slut. <laughs> no, not that far. Not that far. <laughs> but I'm talking about the realism that Game of Thrones portrays. Yeah, but... Well, or, or Peter Jackson's Legend of Zelda. I would watch that. Well, I would be okay with well, that. The well, the big thing is the reason why I say Zelda needs an anime is because the reason why I keep... <laughs> He's glaring at his cat at the moment. <laughs> Stupid cat keeps jumping up here on the table. Get down, Fader. Come here, you little shit. Woo! Anyway, but the reason why I say Zelda would would benefit more from an anime is because with anime and cartoons, you have to do a lot with just drawn space. You got to make the face express. Link is speechless, and this is the reason why I don't want them to do a Game of Thrones type of thing because you're gonna make Link speak, and that's the one thing that everyone goes, "No, you fucked up with Samus. We don't want to hear Link speak." No, no, no. I I think so. I was thinking about this the other day. If you had a three-season Game of Thrones-style Zelda series, okay, and the three seasons would be Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and Twilight Princess, because those three games all follow each other chron chronologically, um, and they're all three series where Link has a companion. True. That speaks. So you'd have Navi, which would, which would both be the little ball fairy and also form into a human at times to talk to him that would look a little bit like the like um sprite from the animated from the awful animated series nobody wants to talk about right <laughs> so it'd be a mixture of those two things which you'd also get with tattle from majora's mask but then you'd have midna, midna who, in okay. twilight princess yeah. so, I, so that's I, how you would work around link not talking in a series i get that but it, it, but it's still my mind keeps going back to the smash brothers anime-esque intro they did for paulatana that's the reason that was why. Amazing. That's that's the reason why I keep doing Kid, that. Kid Icarus could also benefit from an animated series. That, um, that, God, that would that, be amazing. That's the, that's the reason why I'm sitting here looking at this for the anime version of Legend of Zelda. I'm going because there are some things that Link does a human can't physically do. Because I'm sorry, if we had a hook shot right here, Matt Pat's kind of right. Yeah, sat yeah. Here, we sit <laughs> here, we shoot. Arm off. We sit there, we shoot that shit right there. Our arms are gonna go. Yeah. And if nobody knows what we're talking about, Game Theory has a fantastic video. He did, he always has fantastic videos, but he's got a great video on The Legend of Zelda and the hookshot and like how that could never physically happen yeah. and work. So that's the reason why I say it would benefit from an animated series, because there, there are some things that Link can do that a normal human cannot do. Well, and then, so Nintendo could start building a universe, because this is what people are doing now. Marvel, DC, even Universal is now building their own monster universe. With <laughs> Let's the not mummy talk and, about that last one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Nintendo could do this with their own universe. Think of Metroid, right? Yeah. If you had, if you did a Metroid series, if you did an animated series, as much as I think it would much, it'd be, it would be way better as like well, an actual reason, film. Well, the, but hang true. on, hang on. What is Samus? She's a bounty hunter. 
where are there other bounty hunters in Nintendo's like F Zero? F Zero. It's the only other place, right? Now think of like because we've only seen Captain Falcon race. Like that's fun sometimes and for short periods. Like NASCAR fun for, is uh, fun for it's fun for short times if you could finish the race. Holy right, right. Fuck. So you'd have think of like Captain Falcon joining up with Samus on a mission to annihilate some like they're both bounty hunters that are going towards the same thing at the same time right I mean, and that's, that's a competition so you could actually make captain falcon sort of an antagonist at that point um and then build his own so series basically from that. sonic and knuckles at that point a little bit yeah yeah a little bit um anyway um there's also a really cool fan game there's there's a couple fan games obviously we talked about am2r um there's another one that i really recommend people trying and you can play it on your nes classic or emulator or whatever you want to do if you have an ips patcher Uh, an ips patcher takes basically a patched version of a game because people are only offering this patch and you have to come up with the other part yeah and the other part is the original game and basically an ips patcher takes the patch and the original game and marries them together and patches them and now now you have a new game built on the the original the fundamentals the and the fundamentals the, and engine of the original one exactly so there's a new fan game that came out last year called metroid rogue dawn and it's about um you actually play as i, I think her name is rogue dawn you play as basically ridley's adopted human daughter almost yeah and it's it's basically kind of like samus right she operates the same way and so it's more like a it's more like a zero suit rather than it is the various suit sort of thing, but it's a prequel that takes place just before the events of the original Metroid game. Mm. Um, and so play through that. It's really freaking stinking great. Uh, I played it last year and it's amazing. It's so <laughs> good. I played it. It's so good. Um, so um, before we, before we finish off here, cause we actually went longer than we normally do with our other stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I no, 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 we, we went the other way. We went with talking about each game rather than like talking about the series as a whole. Um, what makes Metroid special to you? Like, why is it your favorite thing? It's well, it's a couple of my favorite games because the other one is Zelda, of course. Because right. as you saw, we or as you heard, we've kind of diverged from it. But what makes Metroid one of my favorite games is that it's one of those games that you sit there and you listen to that you play and you can just immediately get immersed to. Mm-hmm. It's not that hard to just let go of the real world with this game and just play the game as the music guides you. Right. Sorry, now my cat's doing something else. I'm going to have to... I shot! Right. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> I threw an envelope across the room, and man, that worked really well. Anyway, um, so the world the world is really immersive. The world they've built is really well, is really good sometimes, and sometimes it's really awful. Like, you have yeah. so many cool enemies, you have so many cool creatures, and environments, and worlds, and and planets. here you are, you're kind of disrupting their peace. <laughs> and you have, like, two villains. And that's it. And like, I mean, and that's like, that's, like, one of the big negative towards the game, is that there's not many villains, which I kind of hope Metroid Prime 4 does remedy a little bit. But at the same time, I don't. We don't know who's going for it, so they could go with the whole mentality of the villain ain't broke, don't fix it. Because right. corruption did that, where Samus, where Dark Samus, corrupted everyone around Samus and tried to sure. corrupt her. But like, look, look at it this way. That's why Spider Man makes such a good film and it's in such a good comic book. Like he's such a good character is because his rogue gallery is freaking amazing. Every character, almost every character, there's in his a ro- reason why you read Spider Man for the villains and never for the character. I will not agree with that because Spider Man's yeah. character is great. I'm not going to depending deny, on who's writing him, he's great. I'm not saying but that his ro- it's the truth, have, but you have Sandman, Venom, Carnage, Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Hot Goblin. Like you have all these people that people can Mr. name Negative. off. Like you can, I've never heard of that one. Uh, yeah, he's the new villain in the uh, new Spider-Man game for the PS4, which one, uh, of, which is one of the reasons why I want to get a PS4. Interesting, because uh, you find out Mr. Negative is the one that's more dangerous than the Kingpin, because he has a yin yang power. When he's in his good per quote unquote persona, he's very very nice. He's very very calm. But when he does when he goes to Mr. Negative, he's able to manipulate basically dark matter in a sense to be able to do anything it hence his version mr negative one day we're gonna find out like the limitations of dark matter and it's gonna like implode retcon. The world. yeah it's gonna implode the world and retcon like every single sci-fi anything anyway back to metroid that's why 
certain aspects of the series suffer a little bit is because like it rehashes a lot of stuff yeah, look at super metroid zero mission it rehashes a lot of stuff yeah uh the only one that doesn't really ha- rehash a lot of stuff is like fusions to a point prime prime, the prime trilogy sometimes sometimes because uh because dark samus yeah dark samus once you find then, that once you know it's the original metroid that you metroid prime creature that you killed mm-hmm. on talon 4 that's basically hellbent for revenge because the fucker the fucker has like 99 lives and put the con put the uh, contra code in right right can't get away <laughs> um and then other m has a, a decent story it's not yeah. fantastic but it's a decent story it's the de- and that's and that's why i said i'm in the camp of it's a good game but it's also one of those games that i say at least play once and yeah. if you don't touch it again it's no skin off my nose right right so anyway that is that's metroid that's in a in a big morph ball that is Metroid rather than <laughs> <Yeah>. a nutshell. <laughs> um, is there any other things that you would say about Metroid before signing off? Uh, if you enjoy Metroid, there's a there's a Metroid inspired game that's from that's an indie game that came out around the same time Shovel Knight oh, yeah. did. Axiom Verge. That's right. He's pl- uh, the guy that I'm talking to is playing <laughs> through it. No, I've beat it. Oh, you beat it. Yeah. I used a guide because I played it towards the end of the Wii U's life, and I wanted to play it, but I also needed to like just get done with it so yeah. I can play Xenoblade X. Um, but yeah, Z- um, what, what was it called? Uh, Axiom Verge. Goodness gracious, Axiom Verge uh, is a fantastic. It is a fan like it should. It should have been a Metroid game. It, um, it could have. It it has a lo- it has a lot a lot of throwbacks. And to this Metroid. is this is where this is how fans should look at. This is how fans should look at making their own games that spin off from Nintendo oh, products. Uh, because and Nintendo just, is never going to buy your product. They're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. Well, they'll co-own it with you because Nintendo went, oh shit, yeah, put it on the Wii U. Yes, but as an original product. Yeah, what I'm saying what product. I'm saying is that like if you if you rip off their products and make your own fan game, they're not going to go for it. No. But if you make your own thing, they'll... You know, it's going to be great, and they're going to they'll love it. bring you into the Nintendo family, treat you really nice, right? But Axiom Verge, you follow the you follow the scientist who gets pulled into another dimension or something like it's that. A, it's and a very it's a convoluted plot, and it, it if you because I looked up the Wikipedia and like because I didn't really understand the story after I beat it, I read it and I was like, holy cow, this yeah. game is fucking deep. Yeah, the game is deep as shit, and I and I, this is the one game that even though it is old, I don't feel comfortable spoiling for you because yeah, yeah. it's really good. I would I would tell people to maybe play with a guide because there's a lot of items to get that you yeah, can own, that you would ne- you spend hours trying to find. It's one of it's one of those games that it, it, it is one of those games that gamers like to call a game guide. As much as I hate to say it, and it's one of those ones that I go, okay, you're you're playing this, you're doing all this, you're but you're trying to find everything. Have the guide for like item locations, but don't right. don't use it for like the bosses. Right. For, use it for the item locations, like Breath of the Wild. <laughs> right. And uh, anyway, so that was a good game too. Um, definitely check out Axiom Verge. It's really cheap. It's on the Wii U. I think it's coming. I think they're talking they're, about bringing it to Switch. They're bring, they're talking. They, I think they already did brought it to the Switch. I think. Mm. Not yet. Uh, but it's it's cheap. It's like ten bucks. Yeah, it's well worth the money that you'll. It, it's it's a it's a well worth it. Uh, but yeah, my that's my thoughts on Metroid and some and a little tacked on for the fan game. Yeah, it's a fun series that I think everyone should play. Definitely. Well, thanks, Chris, for joining us for our sixth episode. We went a little bit long, but uh, <laughs> am I one of the longest ones? Uh, yeah, I think so. But whenever, when whenever anybody wants to talk to me about Nintendo stuff, like that's go- that's guaranteed to be a long conversation. <laughs> awesome, so, I win. <laughs> yeah, so maybe maybe this will be the last because we already talked about Zelda uh, okay. as well. So I think if anybody wants to talk about anything else, we're just gonna have to make a whole new like Nintendo podcast just for stuff like that. So oh shit, I would and, join you for that. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to that at all. But anyway. Uh, Thanks, everyone, for listening, and uh, we'll see you guys in our next episode. See you.